we'll be okay. Our objective again was just explore the properties. Doesn't that sound like it's fun? Explore the properties of the four functions of the form y equals a times b to the x. Graph exponential functions that have base e. We're going to talk about the number e today as we go through some of our stuff. So this says using an exponential model, the best temperature to brew coffee is between 195 degrees and 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Seriously, you got to know a lot about coffee to know 195 to 205. Perfect. There is all kinds of weird stuff going on with coffee. Anybody cold press coffee? What on earth does that do? It just makes it cold. All this stuff is with, it's just coffee. It, I, I, don't, I don't get it. You know, people go pick out all the special beans and they pour it in the machine that grinds the beans. I, a cup of decaf, that, that's about it for me every once every, well, actually I drink coffee once every two months or something. So not a lot. But some people are really into coffee. So it's important that we know. The best brewing takes place between 195 and 205. Now we know. Coffee is cool enough to drink at 185. Ah, so there. The table shows temperature readings from a sample cup of coffee. Well, that's got to be a good job. It's going to sit here and stick a thermometer in the coffee. So after zero minutes, five minutes, ten, at least they only had to go a half hour, huh? So there it is. How long does it take a cup of coffee to be cool enough to drink and use an exponential model? Well, good news. Like we've done this before. We've just not done it with exponential models. So we've put stuff into the calculator before, and we're going to do that again. And that stuff up there is called data. And data goes into stats, statistics. So that's our little button um, left and down from the left arrow. So if you find the left arrow and go left and down one row, we got stats. Boom. And what we're going to do is put some numbers in. So we're doing number one. Edit. I got stuff in here. So what I have to do is arrow to the top and hit clear and enter. Get that stuff out. I'm going to clear the other one too. Up. Clear, enter. So let's see. We need a 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. That won't take us real long. And thank goodness, they rounded to the nearest degree. There weren't any tenths of degrees for this coffee. We will put those in two. All in there. And when you get to the bottom, it should say L2 and then a little 8 in. We actually just put in seven pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of information, so we should be down there at this line. So, plot the data to determine if an exponential model is realistic. Oh, it should show growth or decay is what they're saying. But this is statistics, and we want to plot it, which means we have to use stat plots. So we can't just hit y equals. We have to hit second y equals, because this is statistical stuff we're doing here. And then we're going to hit number one. And the first thing we'll do is turn it on by hitting enter while blinking. And that is the type of graph we want. We just want some dots. We want to see what the dots look like. And we definitely want this to be list one and list two because that's where I just put my data. Put our window. So, hit window. Our x values were list one, and that's zero to 30. So maybe we'll go from negative five to 40, just to make sure we can see them all. And then we'll go down to our Y's, and let's see. Our lowest one is 104, so maybe 100 for the low. And our highest one is 203, so maybe 205. We can we'll make a difference, just so that we can see the, the top and the bottom. And then we're going to hit graph. Oh, yeah, that kind of looks like it's going to be a little bit of a curve going there. So um, the question was, is this model realistic? Got that curve going. Kind of like that, you know. 
at this point, you might even say, well, I might even try a straight line. But yeah, this would fit a little bit better because it does have a little bit of a curve to it. So now, it says, a graphing calculator exponential model assumes the asymptote is at y equals zero. Since room temperature is about 68 degrees Fahrenheit, we need to subtract 68 from each temperature value and calculate a third list by letting L sub 3 equal L sub 2 minus 68. They're saying if we take our cup of coffee and, and we sit it in this room and we wait 24 hours and we come back, that it's not going to be frozen because this room is not Coffee is going to go down to room temperature, but it's not going to get colder than that. So they're saying we have to take this graph and we kind of have to move it down so we can really see what's going on. So we're going to go back into stats, and this time we're going to go back into edit, but we're going to list three. And we're going way up to the top because we want to tell it what to do in list three. Now when we type it in, we're actually going to see what we're doing down here. But right now, we're letting the calculator know, hey, we want you to do this stuff in list three. And that stuff is we want it to take list two and subtract 68, so we have that room temperature thing going on. So to get list two on there, we're going to hit second number two. That's what shows up in the blue. <coughs> and then minus 68. So that's going to lower all of them. So if we graphed it now, we're not going to see it, because all of them have been moved down by 68. Well, look at that. It just did a whole lot of math for us at the touch of a button. Cool. We didn't have to subtract all of that. And then it says, let's go ahead and use exponential regression, not on list two, because that was the one where we didn't consider room temperature, on list one and list, list three. Now, anytime we want the calculator to do the statistics for us, we have to hit stats again. But we're going to arrow to the right once to calculate, because we want it to do this stuff. And I'm looking for exponential regression, and I don't see it, which means I've got to scroll down. Aha! It's zero. So we keep going down until we get to EXPREG. And what the calculator is going to do is it's going to come up with a curve that will be a great fit for this. But we have to tell it we want it to do list one and list three, not list two. Here's where things get weird. So hit that. Some of you are going to see a horizontal listing of things that we need to do. Um, but yours probably says list one and list two. So what we have to do is tell the calculator second, list one, comma, the comma is right above the seven, then second, list three. Those of you that have the calculators that have the, the lines, go down to the one that says list two and change it to list three. So hit that. And then I'm not worried about storing this or anything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. The rest of you can go down to calculate that and hit enter. There it is. It says, hey, if you're looking for a model for an exponential function, I got it for you. Y equals 134 points, oh, well, I hate to go even farther than a tenth. It's coffee, for goodness sake. So 134.5 times 0. Point, uh, well, I suppose we can go 956 since there's a 0 there. That'd be kind of nice. To the X. And the other two things are to tell us whether or not this is a really good model. A fantastic model gives you an R value of negative 1 or 1. That's a pretty close model that we have there. So now it says, remember we had to move it to get room temperature. Translate it vertically by moving it back up to 68 units. Okay, I think we know how to do that. We just have to put plus 68 in the back. That's all we have to do. Our room temp, 68. So we had to take the room temperature off of the picture in order to find our exponential model and then move it back up so we could see it. And there it is. And now we want to find out how long it's going to take the coffee to cool to 185. Okay. So here's what you do. 
I'm going to put a 185 over here. And we're going to do y sub 1 and y sub 2. And we're going to let Linky tell us how long it's going to take. Now, I can show you how to get the calculator to store all that so that you don't have to type it in. But I need to know how you're feeling about your calculator skills right now. So 43210 me on how you feel you followed everything we've done so far. Give me something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Your diagnostics are turned off. Don't worry about it. You're not going to need the honor anymore. Okay, and I don't think I'm going to take you any farther and show you how to store stuff. I think we'll just go with what we have. So let's go ahead and go to y equals. And we'll get our wonderful little. 134.5 <clears throat> parentheses 0 0.956 parentheses to the x and then plus 68 and then my other my other one's going to be 185. Oh, either one. I'm sorry. I just did it backwards. I made this y sub two and this y sub one. It doesn't, because it's just going to show us the intersection. And I'm hoping my window is still good, you know, because I think about my initial window. My initial window, I went to like 205. Yeah, I should be able to see 185. Let's see, crap. Ooh, that's a pretty good fit they gave us there. Let's go into all our little dots. And it does hit. So, Blinky, you're up. Where do we get Blinky? Second trace. He's our pet cursor. We need to know where he's located at. Second trace. Which one? Number five. And Blinky's pretty far away from the intersection. I don't like to make Blinky work too hard if he doesn't have to. So I'm going to move Blinky closer. And enter, enter, enter. <coughs> the Blinkster says at about 3.1. I go back and look at the data and see. I'm pretty sure this was in minutes. I don't think they did seconds. Although, if they're serious about their coffee, maybe they did. Nope, five in minutes. So, you make your coffee, you set the timer. I'll be able to drink this coffee at 3.1 minutes. Or not. Because maybe you have your thermostat set. So maybe you did 70 degrees and you had to change all of this because you had 70 degrees. But you can figure it out if you really love coffee and you didn't want to know where you take it. Use the exponential model. How long does it take for it to reach 100 degrees? Well, what do we change? Yeah, make the 185 100. Let's do that. I don't want 185 anymore. I want 100. Still get to see our wonderful little nice kitty curve there. Oh, look at that. It's way down there. Well, that's because of our window. Started at 100. Didn't think anybody wanted 100 degree coffee. So maybe I better make it 90. A little bit below that. So let's see. Graph. Looking for the nice little curve again. <coughs> Definitely an intersection. Get the blinkster in there. And I don't know why Blinky is still in the middle of the window. I'm going to move him a little closer, make the math a little easier for him. One, two, three, enters. Going to take almost 32 minutes. Almost 32 minutes. B says, in problem three, would the model of the exponential data be useful if you did not translate the data by 68 minutes? We already talked about that. The copy's not going to get any colder than room temperature. So, no, it wouldn't be really useful. So, for B, no. Coffee will not drop. 
below the room temperature. And in science, we probably already talked about that process of osmosis, where something cool will go into something hot and then have that merge together and do their thing. So, there'll be a lot of those in the homework. That's a lot to keep track of as we go through that, but it's useful. I mean, if your kids really want to know when you should drink your coffee. So, now that we have the calculator, let's talk about the number three. It's called the natural base. And here's the deal. Here's the story behind E. This guy named Euler came up with it. Euler was a loan shark. He was trying to figure out, if I charge people interest every day, that would be good. But what if I charged them interest every hour? What if I charged them interest every minute, every second, every half a second? So somebody could come up to me and say, Oily, because you know that would be his nickname, of course. Oily, how much do I owe you? And I'd say, Well, do you want to know how much you owe me right now? Or when I finish this up? Because I want to be more money. Oily found out there is a limit. If you use the formula for compound interest, which we've seen before, you could keep putting higher and higher values in here. Was approaches the same number. So he named that number after himself. And we're going to see that number right now on our fabulous calculator. That number is in the first column just to, uh, let's do the normal one. Let's do the division. He will do that one first. So do second division. You see a little E there in blue? Well, I better go back to the main window first. That. 2.718281828 blah 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 and it does it keeps going forever like pi it's just one of those things it's irrational it just keeps going now the key we're going to want to use a whole lot is we're going to want to raise e to a power and that one is second ln but it's a capital l and a capital n and it's just next to the four and up and next to the four because we're going to want to raise e to a power so even if we just wanted to know what e to the first is we so when we're using E and we want to raise it to a power, don't use the little carrot symbol. Use second LN. LN stands for natural logarithm, which is how you want to do E. But that is logarithms, and we won't get to that until after the MCAs. Yep, after the MCAs we get. So natural base exponential functions use a base of E. Wait a second. So instead of a normal number base, there's going to be an E there. Yeah, there will be. You know what? It's 2.71828182. It's just growth. That's all it is. It's a number bigger than one. It's just growth. So it isn't any different than what we've been doing, except that we have this new exposure to this wonderful number. So it says, how can you use a graphing calculator to evaluate e to the third? Well, the easiest way is just to use that second ln button. Second ln three. Ta-da! There it is, e to the third. Now, you could use the graph of y equals e to the x. We're never going to use that, by the way. But we do need to know that it looks like growth. So let's go back into y equals. Let's clear out all that wonderful math. And let's turn our stat plots off. So second, stat plots, and number four, turns them all off. Boom. Now back into y equals. We have everything all cleared up. And we're going to do second ln so we can get that e to the x button in there. And this time we're just going to put an x there. And let's just try. Zoom six. Negative 10 to 10 right there. There it is. Let's go like all the other growth models that we did because it's 2.718 blah blah blah. Now if we had to find e squared, e to the third, e to the fourth and we wanted a long list, now because we have it graphed we could just do second graph. 
and there's our table. So it's got all the powers that we could possibly want. Notice it gets really big really fast at seven. We're already at um, you know almost eleven hundred. So it definitely is exponential growth. In fact, so much if you go a little bit farther, you start getting scientific notation. It's so big. So if you needed to do a lot of them, you probably do it graphically. But for us, we're just going to be punching in with that second line of that vocabulary. So. Now here, I believe they have one for us to try. How can you use a graphing calculator to evaluate e to the eighth? I just want you to get it so I can see you can find it. So you can either just use what we're doing right now. But like I said, I would prefer everybody got used to that. To the next one. Or I can use that. You don't need all the decimals if you want to put about 2,981. So this one has to do with the fact that we are going to be talking about a lot of interest formulas. And remember, Euler was trying to figure out, if I could charge people interest all the time, <coughs> how would it work? And came across his number E. So interest, if the interest is compounded continuously, we need a new formula. Did that just skip a page? That's not cool. We need to do regular compound interest first. There it is. Go back to that one, please. Let's do that first before we talk about all of this uh, continuously compounded stuff. This is what the compound interest formula looks like. A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. That's quite a few things we got to put in there. So we just need to know what they stand for. Well, then we look in the problem and see what we need. P is called the principal amount. And that's how much did you put in originally. Banks always call that your principal. What was your principal amount you put in or you borrowed? And then we already know R. R is the annual rate of interest, but we have to have it as a decimal when we put it into this formula. T, number of years the amount is deposited or borrowed for. Um, car loans generally need five years or six years. Home loans used to be strictly 15 years, and now many of them, because home is so expensive, are up to 30 year loans. Capital A is the amount of money that will accumulate after all of those years, including the interest. The last automobile that I bought was the first time I have not thrown up while realizing how much I was going to pay with my vehicle. And we did this a lot. Uh, when you think about how much you pay with all of the interest that's accumulated on them, it's a phenomenal amount. You, know, of, of you go thinking, oh, the sticker price is $20,000, but you walk out having to pay with the loan almost $40,000. So almost double of whatever it is. And if you don't put any money down, that's going to happen. N is the number of times the interest is compounded per year. And usually for savings accounts, they'll say quarter. So that's going to be four times a year. So this formula works when interest is compounded annually once a year, semi-annually or biannually, because some banks will still use biannually. That means twice a year. And then quarterly, generally most banks will give you your interest quarterly. Monthly is 12. Daily is, of course, 365. So um, these things happen, the monthly and the daily, with credit cards. When you put money in a savings account, you only get quarterly interest. You have a credit card with stuff that's due, and you have a monthly and a daily balance. So they use that to their advantage, of course. They want your interest. That's why they gave you credit card in the first place. So example one says, Suppose you invest $500 in a savings account that pays 3.5% annual interest. How much would be in the account after five years? Okay. New formula is a whopper. And that looks too much like an M. I would call it a Like so. But all we have to do is get the info that's in there into that formula. That's what we have to do. So principal, you're putting 500 
500 smackers in there. One is part of the formula because that's your original 100% of your money. Interest rate, 3.5%. 0.035 is a decimal. Now N is how many times a year you're going to calculate your interest. And it's set up there as annual interest. Well, that's just once a year. And that goes in two different spots in the formula. And then T stands for how many years? Well, that's a five. So before we punch this in, there's some really basic math we can do ourselves. And we can say, hey, this is going to be 500 times 1.035 to the fifth power. But then we hand over the calculator. So here you go. Tell me what it is. 500 parentheses 1.035 parentheses to the fifth power. Five hundred and ninety three dollars and eighty four cents. Now you can say, well that's not a lot of money. Well you only left it in there five years. And you didn't have a lot of money to begin with. So it's like they're giving you ninety three dollars and eighty four cents just for leaving your money in there. Amount of interest. In fact, most interest rates right now for savings accounts are only 3%. They get 3.5%. Example two, we've got somebody putting a little more money in. Aha! An amount of $1,500 is deposited in a bank paying an annual interest rate of 4.3%, but compounded quarterly. What is the balance after six years? What's the principal? What are they putting in? 1500 so they're starting with more money. That means they're going to end up with more money. Interest rate is a decimal. But this was not just compounded yearly. Quarterly, what do we use? Four. Did they say how many years? Better. We can't use this problem. Yeah, it's a six. <coughs> There's a little math you could do by hand, because we do know 4 times 6. But with this one, I'm going to push this one in in steps. I'm going to follow the order of operations, because I'm just not that trusting with my calculator. I'm just not. If you wanted to use the calculator for this one, I would suggest at least double parentheses inside that piece if you absolutely all in one step, but usually I don't trust the calculator enough to do that. So I will start with 0 0.043 divided by 4, get an answer, add 1, raise that answer to the 24th power, and then take it times 1500 because then I know I followed the order of operations. It's going to be right. 1938 dollars and 84 cents. I missed writing something now. There we go. And if it's a bank, they're only going to give you 1938 dollars and 83 cents. They always knock off. And, that's, and they don't give you the interest until the end of the year. So if you go in in June and you're expecting to get your interest from January to June, uh -huh. In the fine print in the contract, it will say that you have to wait until the end of the year to get that additional interest. You'll get the interest that was owed to you for the previous year, but not the new one. They want your money in there. So why does a bank want your money to just sit in there? Because for every dollar that you give them, they can lend out $3 to somebody else. There's a lending rate, and that's where they really make their money is by making money out of other people. So, that's the reason they want your money. If at any day uh, somebody from the FDIC comes into the bank, they have to see that for every $3 the bank has lended, they have $1, $1 in a savings account for somebody. If they don't, um, then they have to, some of them have to close. You know, it's bad. So it's a really big deal that they get your money and have it sitting in there so that they can all right. Oh, doing pretty good. That's the way students. 
You were such a sweet baby. Your wealthy grandmother decided to start a college fund for you. She invests her life savings of, okay, it's your grandma, $20,000. Twenty thousand bucks in an account that pays normal rate. Like I said today, let's just go with three percent. Compounded quarterly, because that's what most banks will do. Grandma loves you. <coughs> How much will be in the account when you start college eighteen years later? So your baby, grandma's thinking ahead. Instead of giving presents every year, I'll just I'll take my money and I'll put it in a bank account and see what happens here. Sweet grandma. So how much did she put in? 20 grand. One plus interest rate, 0 0.03. What number should we put below that? Four, it was quarterly goes in two spots. How many years? Yeah, well, she wants to see you again when you're 18 years old. And, well, hopefully she'll see you before then. She's putting her life savings away for you, for goodness sake. So this one, I maybe might not even do the four times 18 in my head. I might just punch this whole thing in because this is kind of obnoxious looking. So I'd start inside the parentheses and say, hey, I need 0 0.03 divided by 4. Enter. Add one, enter, raise it to the, and this time I'd use parentheses and say, I don't want to do four times 18 in my math, and I'm important, let me do it that way. And take that times the $20,000. Gotta love your grandma. She's thinking ahead. Cheap colleges, you're looking around $25,000. But wasn't it sweet of her? That's a lot of money. Good job, Grandma. Down here, you're thinking ahead. You got something you're saving for. Suppose you invest $1,000 in a savings account that pays 5% annual interest. If you make no additional deposits or withdrawals, how many years will it take for it to be 15? Okay, you got something in mind that's going to cost $1,500 when you hit it. You've got a, a, a car that you're hoping is going to be around $1,500 when you can afford it. So here's what we want. We want to know when is all of the stuff we've been doing going to be equal to at least $1,500. What did you put in the bank? 1,000 smackers. Interest rate? Compounded annually. Cool. That's a one. We need a lower many years. Hmm. All right, so let's pretty this up a little bit. Fifteen hundred, there's nothing we can do. But over here we've got a thousand. Point zero five divided by one is just point zero five. So one point oh five to the T. This would require logarithms, which we know that yet. So what did we do earlier today when we wanted to find where they're equal? Y sub 1, y sub 2. That's what we do. Doesn't matter which one's which. We let Blinky tell us when will these be the same, oh Blinkster. So let's see. Put 1,500 in the y sub 1 this time. 1,000. Parentheses, one point four five parentheses two B X plus fifteen thirteen three. But I'm gonna have to change my window because this is a word problem, you know. So window, let's see, X is how many years? We started with a thousand, but it's only five percent interest. So I don't know, maybe twenty years. It might take a while. And then we need to see fifteen hundred. So maybe zero to two thousand for the Ys. Because that's what y sub 1 is. We want to see that. And then we hit graph. So there's the 1500. Come on, come on, you can do it. Yes. Intersection.
Winkster, find it. Second trace. Five. Bing, bang, boom. 8.31 years. But the bank won't give you that money until the end of nine years. So we're going to put approximately 8.31 years. But then we know you got to wait till that contract is up at the end of the year to get your money. Nine years before you can get your 1500 If you stopped after eight, you wouldn't have quite enough. You wouldn't be at your 1500 there. Well, let's see, how much do we have left? That's actually a pretty good stopping question. We just have to talk about, um, well, like you can see, this. Talking about things that are finite, and then talking about using E again. Um, back in this one that seemed out of order here. So, after everything we've done today, 43210 mean where you feel you're at. Is what we've got. I have some of the calculators just going to drive me. That. Uh, but at this point, that's that's what we have to do. So let me get you day two. So some problems from the book, and then a worksheet. Because our book doesn't do a very good job on compound interest, and that is absolutely an MCA topic. We want to make sure that you know what's supposed to happen with your money. Which is a good thing, by the way. Um, you hear scandals all the time from um, rich musical entertainment people who hand their money over to an accountant. One day they called the accountant and there was no accountant. The accountant took all their money and went off to a desert island somewhere by themselves with their moolah. Billy Joel was one of the first ones that admitted it. Usually entertainers don't like to admit that they've been test with like that, you know. Uh, hey, I wasn't smart enough with my money and handed it over. Billy Joel's was his brother-in-law. His brother-in-law took all his money. Well, but he's got lots of money. So, you know, he could spare a little bit. So, yeah, lawsuits all the time. Somebody saying people mismanage their funds, took their money and <laughs> ran with it. So if you're ever famous, make sure you're checking on your funds yourself. If you're doing a little math yourself. And you know, uh, don't forget the people that were in Algebra 2 with you way back when. That'd be nice too.